Eco Cities Open Call. We have for end users SMEs in the agri food uh, sector. Uh, we're very happy that you're here with us today to hear about this opportunity. Uh, we're here with a few of our consortium partners, mostly from uh, Funding Box and from InfoArt, to guide you through the process of the Open Call and help you prepare for applying for this opportunity. So let me talk you through our program of today. Um, after this welcome, uh, we will dive into what are we actually offering as Hungry Eco Cities to you, and also a bit what are we expecting for that. We're gonna go through the different application questions. There is this uh, specially dedicated application environment on uh, the funding box environment where you can go apply for, register, and go through the application. And we're gonna talk through a few of these questions to help you prepare and understand what we actually mean with them. Uh, then we will go into a few of the open call formalities to take into account when applying. Uh, we're gonna highlight a few elements of this Paths to Progress program, which is part of our open call, what you can expect from that. And then we'll open the floor for questions and Q&A. Uh, and as said by Magda, after 11, for those that still have pending questions or would like to uh, discuss some very specific elements, we have some time to already address them, or you can schedule a dedicated time slot. As some of you might know, this is the second uh, webinar. This means that we already had a previous webinar. Uh, in the first webinar, uh, we took a bit more about we talked a bit more about the general scope of Hungry Eco Cities, what it is, about the opportunity, uh, much more about uh, technicalities, uh, walk through uh, all the different elements on the Hungry Eco Cities application forum, and also the paths to progress. So in this webinar, we're going to highlight some different aspects which we have not yet discussed in the first webinar. Um, so what are we offering? Uh, Rodolfo, I would like to give the floor to you to explain us a bit. What are we offering at Hungry Ecosystems? Yes, <laughs> thank you very much, Leah, and welcome everybody. Good morning. I hope you're all you're all well. Um, you, as you probably know by now, we have a lot of documentation online for your disposal to read and to prepare for the call, guys, for applicants, and for going to ask questions and more. But this slide is to basically very, very narrowly and very, very strategically summarize what is in there. It summarizes in five points what we offer to you as companies and what we ask from you to offer us. So first, what we offer to you is basically the following five things. Creative studio power. In our consortium, we have three creative studios and those creative studios, at least one of them, will be collaborating with each SME in developing the goals, in developing the vision and in developing the ultimate project and I will talk a little bit more about them later on. Scientific excellence. We also have three universities on board with distinct qualities and expertise areas. Also, at least one of those will be part of each project with each SME, offering uh, expertise, support, access to lab environments, and possibly also access to students when it's relevant. Then a play box of AI-driven prototypes. I will highlight each and every one of them. As you may know, we are already working with artists as we speak on developing uh, prototype technologies, AI-driven technologies. And these prototypes will be offered to each project to test out if they're relevant in the context of your challenge in your environment. Fourth, access to artists and designers, obviously. So apart from the artists who are connected to the prototypes, that you may be testing and apart from the creatives, from the creative studios, together with each company that we have selected, we will be searching for an additional artist and or designer to work more specifically on your project. That will be an open call that we will manage and that you will be helping us with and we will be helping you with is selecting the best candidate at the end of that call. And finally, of course, a sum up to 45,000 euros of funding. And we will also discuss a bit more in detail how that is built up and what we expect for that. Now, what do we ask from you? Uh, most importantly, motivation and open-mindedness. 
This is a type of project that is a bit different than most projects you will probably know. It's probably different than most R&D type of activities that you've already conducted or are, are conducting. And experience learns that if you're motivated and open-minded, that is basically the best ingredients to make this work. Also, Hunger Eco Cities is a so-called food system related project. So what we're looking for is to develop solutions, to develop ideas and innovations that, of course, help you as an individual company on the short term, but that need to have a connection to how it relates to larger food system related challenges. And I will talk a bit more about it in a bit. Of course, we hope that whatever we will be doing with you has a high potential impact to positively influence that food system through you as a company and potentially spillovers to other companies or other regions. So we must, um, uh, you in your application must be concentrating on something, on a challenge that goes beyond only your interest and has a wider stake in the food system. It's very important that whatever we are gonna work on, whatever challenge you bring to us and we can dig out, cannot be solved by yourself. This is not a call for ongoing work to finance ongoing activities, to finance things that you're already doing and that you need some extra time or you need some extra funds for to uh, make it better or to complete it. This is to do something new together, which requires, and that's the last one, scientific and creative excellence. So only if this challenge is of thus complexity that not only can you not solve it by yourself, but it requires technical expertise, it possibly requires scientific insights or developments because it's on the verge of what is and is not known in that area, and it requires a creative angle because a standard way of approaching it may not be enough. Those are the kind of challenges that are possibly best suitable for what we have to offer. Can you go to the next one, please, Leah? Now, who, who are we offering to you? This is us. This is the eight partners here. And I will briefly introduce them one by one in a sense. So this is just to get you, um, to get you signed, seeing that. But first, I want to discuss with you what we mean with food system related challenges. What you see here, I'm sorry for it's not so nicely designed, but it's my creation. Here you see all elements that are currently part of a wider food system transition challenge. You see in one word what a problem is, an internationally recognized problem, for instance, consuming too much energy, uh, for instance, not having enough land that we are using for the future amount of food that needs to be produced, having too much emissions, too much waste, and the arrow indicates whether we need more or less from that. The trick is, we need it all possibly at the same time. So any, any challenge that we'll be working on with you never stands by itself. If it is a challenge that is focusing on bringing down energy, it probably also has an effect on productivity or water usage or waste at disposal. If it is a challenge focusing more on the later stage of the food system, tackling obesity or malnutrition, it also possibly has an impact on emissions or land use if this was to become a more structural innovation in the food system. That is why in this project, we need to look at it holistically. And even though we want to focus, we are gonna focus with you on tackling a challenge that hopefully leads to a solution that you can be using after this project, we must be aware that it never comes by itself. And that looking at the other areas of impact or possible impact is indeed very important to do as well. Now, the food system transition challenge is not only these topics, we also have some conditional topics, of course, like these ones. There are in many countries issues and, and problems or worries around the rights or the payment of workers. There is, of course, climate change that is impacting us all and that needs a lot of change, needs a lot of innovation to cope with, even uh, if alone it's about um, remediating it. And of course, there are also a lot of science societal change impacts. There's a lot of things happening. We see a lot of it on the news. Now, those are the types of challenges that we don't address directly in your projects. So we're not going to support um, protests in Brussels, let's say, that cannot be a goal of the project. But there are elements that are relevant and that are playing and you might be impacted by it or you may become impacted by it. So these are also topics that we need to 
take into account when we work on this project together. Now you are somewhere in this area. So any, any SME that is ranging from providing input, resources, nutrients, water, whatever, or technology to a, a food producer up into consumers um, and waste treaters, they all are possible candidates for this form. So it doesn't matter where in the system you are or you contribute to or you perceive yourself in, uh, we are very interested in your story in the challenge that you have. And finally, what can we do? Of course, we have a couple of what we call design options to work on these challenges. And that is where this project should be around. So after we have defined, after you have defined, and you can always discuss it with us, where in this food system your challenge lies, after you have assessed together with us, hopefully after the selection, what it means in a context, we can think about what design options we have to do something about it. And usually these design options have a technological component, be it AI, be it using data, using sensors or another type of technology. It usually has an economical component. Many of these interventions cost money. They need to be earned back. We are totally aware of that, of course. And many of them have a behavioral component as well. With this, you can make a mark or make a statement to the outside world, or the outside world will respond in a certain way to you, which might be different to what's happening today. Now, all of the, these three different areas will be part of the project for sure. Technology, the, the implications of that economically, and behavior or uh, how, it, uh, how it comes across to the outside world. Then back to the five points that we offer. First, the creative studio power. If you look through the documents that we have prepared, you will see one that is called a, it's sort of a vision document, um, and it relates to three different directions, vision directions for a future food system. They are all developed by one of the following creative studios that we have in the program. Carlo Ratti, focusing on mostly the city, and how city and farming synergies now and in the future can make the city a more interesting place for production and consumption. EDIS, that is focusing much more on uh, synergies also, but not necessarily between the city and farming, but within um, mega scale, as they call it, environments where food production and the needs for that are symbiotically uh, enforcing each other or supporting each other. Waste of the one becomes the input of the other and vice versa. And finally, Studio Other Spaces from uh, Berlin in Germany, they are taking the other way and focusing on local conditions, short supply chains, direct communication between supplier and consumer uh, around a small type of alternative agricultural processes. Now, what we hope is that for all of you, you feel a connection with either one or more of these visions towards a food system. They are designed in such a way that they are approachable from different angles and that you can make your own thing out of it. So in the application, we ask you also to reflect on these vision and give us an indication on where you see yourself in relationship to them. You don't have to agree with anything that is written in there, of course not, but it's important for us to know on which side you're mostly uh, positioning yourself. Is it the local side, short change, direct contact? Is it more the techno-optimistical side, let's say, mega scales, or is it something maybe in between, city and farming synergies? And depending on where your heart lies, of course, that studio will probably play a role in the project with you. Yes, next one. Then scientific excellence. I already said we have three universities on board and they are quite different. Here you see which ones they are. Two, one, two are from Brno, Czech Republic, and one is from Belgium, the KU Leuven. In the Brno University of Technology, we are mostly working with the departments that are, um, that are hardware related, let's say, with a lot of knowledge around batteries, IoT devices, sensoring technologies, and how the data coming from those hardware devices can be processed. More on the modeling side, so also techn technologically and also often AI related, but then on the uh, data acquisition and data modeling side, 
we have the KU Leuven. Within the KU Leuven, there is one cross um, um, university department called Leuven AI, where all the different AI research groups that are operating within university are aligned and coming together. From the ones making the models to the ones studying the effects of beha on behavior or the ethical uh, elements when it comes to uh, data modeling, AI modeling. All of them have a place in this project when it comes to AI development. And finally, Mendel University in Brno, that is much more an agricultural, agri-science related university. There they have labs, and there they have a lot of knowledge around plant growth, plant diseases, the way we understand plants and their relationship for that. So depending again on where your project takes you and takes us in this collaboration, probably you'll be collaborating with at least one and possibly multiple of these university groups, depending on where the fit is most logical. For the application, you do not have to worry about that. We will, together with you, make the right matches afterwards. Then third, the play box of AI-driven prototypes. Here you see them in brief. You can also find more information about them online if you're interested. As said, we currently have nine artists, nine teams with the ones that you, um, the partners that you saw just now, the universities and the creative studios, already working on different areas of food-related or food system-related interventions. And I will go through them very briefly in little groups of three. Let's go to the next one, yeah. The first three are these ones. Symposio, this is going to be an AI lightning tableware intervention. It all deals around with how people eat at the dining table and how people perceive eating and what that means for what they eat and how they eat. And in this experiment, we're focusing on lighting conditions and changing lighting conditions to enable certain habits during meal consumption. The Council of Food is something completely different, focusing on generating meetings, council meetings, discussions between food agents, food personas, foods themselves become um, and get a voice and become an actor in these meetings, and they engage in conversation with each other and with us as humans uh, for finding problems and solutions related to their personal, their own situation as a food or the wider food system. And Future Protein focuses much more on predicting the value generation capacity of, in this case, muscles. So it's a rather economically embedded project where we say that when it comes to the protein that is embedded in muscles, that is very potentially enriching for our human diet, but there are a lot of problems with economically assessing the value of muscles in the wider ecosystem. So we need a new economic model, maybe even algorithm that takes into account not just the harvest and the eating value of a muscle, but everything that it does for its environment, like taking up nitrogen and CO2, uh, cleaning the water, being a food source for other uh, species in the water, etc. This is also something that can be translated to another food or to another uh, topic if it becomes relevant in your project. And another three, acoustic agriculture focuses in on the plants and specifically what the effect of sound is on plants, positively in terms of enabling growth or nutrition uptake and negatively in uh, terms of um, enforcing stress factors that have ne ne negative uh, implications for growth and health. Now, this is going to be an AI model that is going to be trained on many different sounds and is going to be producing optimal sound plant sound sequences. Just a disclaimer, these are all going to be prototypes. So we say that very, very grand in these little sentences. This is our vision. This is our hope that these uh, technologies can become. But at this stage, and at the stage that we are offering it to you in the project later on, they're all going to be prototypes. So they need further refinement and testing. Eco is also going to be an AI model, but in this case, it's going to focus on the soil and the symbiotic communication relationship between microhose and plants. We know that microhose can have very positive effects on plant growth and plant health, 
But we also know that in some cases it doesn't work. The mycohose dies, it doesn't catch on, they somehow can't seem to communicate as effectively as in other cases, but we know very little about the whys. And that's what this model is going to be trained for, trying to understand in which situation, in which combinations, mycohose and plants engage in the symbiotic relationship and when they don't or less. And the, the sixth one here, symbiosis AI, is focusing on electrical stimulation. Uh, we know that electrical stimulation can have positive, plant, positive stress effects on plants, but we know relatively little about the circumstances, the conditions, and the uh, frequencies under which it happens well. And that's the focus of this experiment, to get further in depth. Then the last three, culinary journey. They're a bit, again, in a different context. Culinary journey is going to be a content creator, an AI-driven content creator that is capable of creating plant-based food content, marketing content, if you will, or positive commercial type of content based on the scanned food that you offer to the system. It's going to be pre-trained for a tomato and the AI generator is going to be, um, going to be uh, programmed or going to be trained by whatever tactics larger of the not so healthy and nutritional food pr producers and providers have been doing in the past couple of years. Then food is morphed, yeah? that's gonna be an augmented reality application. And that augmented reality application allows you to make a photo of a food anywhere in your home, in the supermarket or anywhere you are. And then on the spot, based on your location generates food system perspective in real time. And it, it generates also possible actions or possible interventions, or places where you can go to learn more about that part of the food system that you've triggered by scanning this specific, specific food in a specific context. That is gonna be quite um, context agnostic, so you can scan any type of food in any type of place, and it will come with a result, quite promising. And then finally, FFF times MPP or food first flavors times minimum viable proteins is going to be an AI recipe generator that is focusing on uh, mixing the seasonal food forest ingredients that are projected or that are expected to be harvestable after, some, after a period of time with whatever it's lacking to make a healthy meal. So for instance, proteins. In this, in this experiment. So you can uh, plan for what you can expect from, for instance, a food forest three months from now, and it can generate recipes that you can start preparing for and whatever you need to make them complete. Now, these are the nine different prototypes that are now being developed. This is not something that you need to worry about in your application. You you don't need to select which ones are relevant for you now. Let's have that clear. But they will be a part of the project after selection. That's why we present it here. We will look at all nine of them with all 10 companies that are selected. And hopefully, for each and every one of you, we can find one or two, or who knows, maybe even three, that are so interesting in your specific context that it's worthwhile to take a look at them and maybe even translate them into your context in your project. Here you see the same nine, but then plotted against where in the food system they are, um, they are related to. Uh, you see that it's quite diverse, but many of them are related to data, obviously, because they're mostly AI, AI embedded. And in the next slide, we see them plotted again, but now against where we think they're most relevant when it comes to the actors in the food value chain. So in this uh, picture, if you consider yourself a grower or a chef, a retailer, or a input provider, this is probably where we're going to start with you. And all of the names of the experiments or the prototypes that are well, in that little um, angle column that uh, you consider yourself in as an SME, we're going to look at those and see to what extent they may be relevant for you. Here, of course, you see that many of them are focusing on the early stages of the value chain, input providers, mostly growers and producers, 
So if you are growing something yourself, hopefully we find some very interesting matches. Uh, and many of them are focusing on the later stages of the value chain. So when the food uh, comes into contact with its ultimate consumer through retail or through supermarkets. Now that, that to explain to you what we are offering and what we are asking from you on a holistic perspective. Now one level deeper, what does that mean for your applications? We're gonna show the questions that you may have already been reading if you've looked at the, the application form and in brief explain to you why we came up with these questions and what we mean by them. And if you have more questions, of course, you can put them in the chat or contact us later on, or we can have one-on-one -on -one discussions to go more in depth. So the first questions are around the fit, the fits with the program. And we have three different questions uh, to begin with. Basically, these questions are aimed for us to get an understanding of who you are as a company, what you do, of course, as a company. Are you growing something? Are you providing something? Are you transporting something? Whatever you do, are you collecting information and distributing it in some way? But also, we want to get an insight in what your vision is on your position in the food value chain. And that relates back to the vision document of the three creative studios. You can use that as an inspiration or to compare your vision against. But it's quite important for us that uh, we get an understanding from you uh, that this is not just about getting some money or getting another project going, but why you find it important to work in this context. And finally, of course, what you would like to work on in this project with us. So the third question is describing the problem challenge in your business you would like to check tackle. Now we say in all of our documents that you don't need to come with a fully developed project plan, not at all. But it is important that we get an understanding of where you see the most potential benefits. Is it in your own processes? Is it in your own production? Is it in the products that you're now putting on the market? Is it in something going wrong anywhere in that, uh, anywhere in that process that you think are, is, is an interesting area of operandi that we can focus on together? That is what we need to know, not how it's gonna be done, with who, in what way, in what stages. That we consider a project plan, and that's something that we want to be developing with you in the first stage of the collaboration. All right. Then we want to know where the project will physically land, of course. So that's the question uh, on the test environment. Uh, so where are you and what do you have? And is there a physical place or a digital place for that matter? that we can actually use to do the testing and to do the prototyping on the ground. Is there a farm? Is there a building? Is there a truck whatever, or, a, or a restaurant? That is going to be the place where ultimately whatever we do together should be able to land and be tested and hopefully be proven that it's an additional value for you and that you would like to keep on using after we end this project. And finally, the video slideshow is because we also would like to know with whom we will be working. Um, in this context, in this call, we decided to have a very simple and a one uh, stage interaction with you. So we only ask one uh, proposal from you and we're gonna decide directly based on that, uh, which 10 companies are gonna be in the program. We are not gonna have further polls or jury meetings or second rounds, nothing like that. So please use this video slide tool option to give us a good feeling on who you are and why you want to be working on this with us, because that is all we're gonna have to get an impression on um, why you are motivated to do this. Then the last question around here is we also ask you to uh, to share with us, if relevant, which companies, institutions there are around. Now, there are two reasons for this, and this is quite important, because if you are proposing a challenge that you are already working on, it is very important that we get a clear idea. One is in what stage are you and possibly with who, because those actors may be an actor in this project as well, or may become that. And secondly, that what you are 
proposing to do with us is new, is it either an added angle or a new direction or a, a new type of technology that gets added to this larger challenge or problem that you've been working on for a longer period of time. And that relates back to what I said earlier, that this is not a goal to fund ongoing development. This is something to do something new, new for you and new for us. And finally, we want to know if you, oh, sorry, one step back. We want to know if you already know of or are connected with third parties or institutions that could be helpful in this project. So let's say you are thinking of a challenge and you know that there's an expert in a certain university or an expert in a certain company that you would love to have on this project as well and to be part of it. If that's the case, please let us know because we know that that means that the project team may be extended beyond just you as an SME, us as a team in the artist we're both gonna look at. Now, finally, to take into account, if you're going to do this, uh, of course, there's also a budget connected, 45,000 euros as an SME you will be receiving. The artists will be paid separately. They will also receive a, a similar budget. And in this budget, most of it is intended to cover for your efforts, efforts and access. Now, we expect the effort that is needed from the side of the SME to be around 0.1 to 0.2 FTE equivalent on a weekly basis. That is not every week exactly the same. It's going to be weeks that is more intense because we're going to be prototyping on the spot. It's going to be weeks where it's uh, or, or where weeks when it's more. It's going to be weeks when it's less because it's a holiday season or you um, indicate with us that you have two very uh, important intense weeks coming up and we decide to postpone some things for after that. That is all possible. We're all flexible. But as an indicator on a continuous basis, we need to be working on this project around four to eight hours a week from your side. And of course, from our side, it's very similar. Then you also need to travel at least once for a joint meeting with us consortium members and possibly also with other SMEs, other companies, and your peers who you will be meeting. So please take in time count at least once you're going to be gone for one or two days to a place in Europe, of course, um, for that event. Then take into account that it may be useful to also travel to the artist you will be working with um, intensively. That may be an artist who is residing very close to you, but it also may be the other side of Europe. So it's always better to plan for it, that that may be a good thing to do. It's not mandatory though, but sometimes working uh, physically helps. Then subcontracting. Please reserve some funds and precisely how to do it is already um, prescribed in the documentation that if you're going to um, uh, test one of the prototypes from the playbox that I introduced earlier, those nine, that we may need a bit of money to do so. We may need to hire the artist behind it as an expert or as an advisor in there for a, a few hours or maybe a few days max. We may be needing somebody to do the installation on site that may cost a bit of money and it will come from your budget. See. So accommodate for that. If we decide that we only do one or that that one doesn't need any additional funds, then of course that money will then, after we decided together in the, in, the, in the project, be released and be added to just the cost that you make as a company. And finally, uh, the project will end with a visual movie documentation. So we will end the project with a short video, a video probably shot at your company with you and the artist and maybe some of the team members of Hungary EcoCities explaining what we did and demonstrating what we did on camera. And there may be some funds required to make that happen as well. Now, that is it from my side on this side. If you have more questions around all of these backgrounds and all these ideas, again, you can mail us, you can uh, contact us via the help desk, through the help desk, or you can request a one-on-one -on -one meeting to go more in depth in your situation, either in one of the given slots or directly through the help desk and the mailing list. On to you, Anka. Okay, thank you, Rodolfo. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being with us today. 
So as uh, Rodolfo already said, this is not the regular open call where you would buy some piece of equipment for your business or you would uh, develop a technological solution. And this is not the regular type of webinar because Rodolfo was so kind to go through the entire application form almost. So if you paid really good attention, you might just have written 60% of it. <laughs> so now I'll just go to the other part of the application form. And uh, before looking at um, the budget, which is the main idea that I want you to, to take away from my part of the presentation, let me just briefly say it again, that uh, this open call for SMEs, for end users, is the first phase of the open call for our driven experiments. And you can see here, we are now at the stage where we are receiving application from SMEs. In, involved in the manufacturing sector, in the, sorry, agri-food sector. So our scope with this first phase is to select 10 SMEs, up to 10 SMEs, that will already start collaborating with us, the Hungry Cositid Consortium, once we have done the evaluation of the proposals we received and we have identified the 10 SMEs we want to work with. So the path to progress uh, experiments will start with the SMEs at the core and for the following six months we'll be working together, us, Hungary Consitis partners and you, the SMEs, to define the challenges and uh, the problems that you have identified at this application stage. Okay. At the same time, we'll be very busy from Hungary City side, receiving applications, launching the call, the second phase of uh, this art driven experiments, the call for artists. We are going to engage in this process of reaching out, attracting artists to apply, and selecting the 10 artists that would work with you at the, after the first six months of the program. Okay, so I wanted to highlight this aspect because we did get some questions about this. It's not the SME, the SME's job to go out there and to try to identify an artist. We are going, that, going to do that in the second part of this open call. And we are going to do the matchmaking and press selection. Initially, there will be 20 artists that would be going towards your uh, challenges. They would like to uh, they would um, address you directly to engage in a, in a collaboration. And after that, together, we'll be selecting the 10 artists to form the team that you'll be working um, together on for the following eight months. So uh, this is where the artistic prototyping will happen and the proposal, which will include the artistic innovation on your test sites that you would be providing for the project. This is where it will happen, but now we are just focusing on the application stage from your side, the SME. Thank you, Leah. Perfect. So for your individual application, you need to consider the eligibility and admissibility criteria that you will find very well detailed as also on the microsite with the application form. You'll have the guide for applicants and the frequently asked question document for you to find all the answers. And if you don't, you can always reach out to us. So you need to be an SME, including a startup from the agri-food sector. And here Rodolfo already provided a very complex overview of the types of um, SMEs that we are looking for. There must be there must have there must be a product on the market with a sufficient track record and real environment to test in. So the SME or startup application applicant in this space would have to be able to provide this product and track record background on their uh, business as well as the uh, real environment to test in. That is your facilities, your premises. The eligible country, you will find a drop down list in the application form. So if your country is not there, chances are you are not eligible. The applications have to be submitted on time, that is before the 15th of May, and uh, they need to be in English. And you will find there all other conditions that you need to fill in. They are just ticking boxes regarding eligibility and uh, if uh, also you need to pay attention to not have a conflict of interest with any of the partners in the Hungary Eco Cities Consortium. Okay, thank you, Leah. 
So here uh, is just a run through the application form. Okay, so this is the microsite. You can see here the link where you'll find all the information, the, the guide for applicants, as I mentioned, the, the webinar recordings, this one and the previous one. And then you'll have the apply now option, the help desk I mentioned before, the apply now uh, option for you to start, edit, and submit an application. Please remember you can edit a submitted application anytime before the 15th of May and the last edited one will be considered for evaluation. So here you'll see the seven sections that needs to that need to be filled in. You can add a contributor for you to, uh, to assist you, to help you with filling in the information. So be very attentive and pay attention to the mandatory fields that you need to fill in. And if you are starting the application and leaving it for later, make sure you just write test or something in the mandatory fields so that you can save and get back to the information that you already filled. So you don't lose any of the information that you might have already worked on. Here you can see that there are uh, specific fields where it is mandatory that you fill in the information correctly, otherwise you cannot proceed. So, You've, you've been talking about the fit with Hungry Equity City's motivation and environment with Rodolfo. And now, as an example, just for us, just for you to understand how we considered doing uh, an estimated budget here. It is very important for you to understand that this is an estimated budget. And as Rodolfo said, things may happen during the project execution and you can still adapt and you can still come back to the estimates. So we are estimating here the first category, which is personal costs. And here, considering the input that I got from Rodolfo, that you may have to involve one person, maybe two throughout the 14 months period, but their presence is not constant and their uh, contribution doesn't have to be in full-time person months for the entire period. So I estimated a total of 22,000 euros for the 14 months execution time. The travel costs, as Rodolfo mentioned, there is at least one mandatory travel. So you should consider that and estimate one or two people traveling or one or more travel costs here. Consumables and equipment depreciation. Do remember that you are facilitating your premises, your environment for the artists to work on and to experiment. So there might, might be some equipments that you may engage in the project. Subcontracting was addressed by Rodolfo as well. I would estimate 10,000 euros. We know we can go back to that when we are building the individual mentoring plan with the artist and we can reevaluate the need for subcontracting artistic innovation from the humanizing technology experiment or from technologies from other sources. So this can be, uh, you can come back to that and see what uh, the real value can be here. But I would start with 10,000 euros subcontracting, which is the maximum as well. Overheads, you can go to 25% or less. But uh, you here you'll see I worked with 25%. So uh, overheads are all the expenses that you can estimate, but you uh, you don't know exactly where they will into which category they might fall. So with this budget, I would get to 45,000 euros, and uh, this is the exact amount that we are offering as a grant. The rest of the sections are more about the declaration of honor and other checking boxes for you to make sure that you are eligible. Please do pay attention because that is a self-declaration that we base our eligibility check on. So make sure you read the questions and you tick them correctly so that you can enter the first stage of the evaluation. As mentioned, the deadline is the 15th of May. You have here all the information that to uh, you might need to write your proposal. And again, you can reach out to us by email at the help desk in spaces or one-on-one -on -one calls as uh, they have been advertised several times here and also on the social networks. In addition to, I think I have a couple more slides, Leah. 
Okay, in addition to the information I shared about the formalities, the application form, just for you to, to bear in mind that we launched the call on the 15th of February. It is open until the 15th of May at 5 p.m. Brussels time. And starting with July, we'll be informing, at the beginning of July, we'll be informing applicants, all of them, about the results of the evaluation. And uh, by the 1st of September, we have to, we'll have chosen the 10 SMEs to start the Path to Progress program and start collaborating with us initially, as I said, the Hungry for Cities Consortium. And later on down the road, they will be joined by an artist to elaborate on their artistic prototype. And I think that might be my last slide. Yes, thank oh, you. Anka. So we, you can take it from here. Thank you. Thank you. So the last part of the graph and the timeline Anker showed was about the Path to Progress program. I'll just shortly go through it. Um, the program exists of a 14 months uh, support program, which we have split it up in three different stages. The discover stage, which will be in the start, which will be only between you and the Hungry Eco Cities uh, Consortium. And then the second stage as of develop and demonstrate, that's when also the artists, which we will select in a later phase, will join. I will shortly go through each of these three phases to explain you what will happen in that program. Uh, in first instance, in the discover phase, we will jointly formulate the challenge with which you are applying um, to better understand that and also to upload that for the matchmaking with the artist because they will be matched based on your challenge. Uh, and then there will be the first talks and conversations uh, to make sure that uh, the artists understand the type of challenge you have, the test situation there is available and also for you to give some additional information. So those are the presentations uh, which will be in October. Uh, then based on that, the artists will write their motivation and there will be a pre-selection. And with two artists, we will go into a more intense collab period. So each selected as me will get two artists that are pre-selected. And with them, we will further discover how their ID with the prototype they want to bring in in the possible project they want to do together with you fits and what would be needed to actually test it. In the same time, in this period, you will also get acquainted with the Hungry Eco Cities Consortium uh, with our scientific expertise and also uh, with the uh, toolbox we have and we will find the matches and see where we can best collaborate on that and what type of program and project we can create. And that will be formalized in the first documents, how we want to work together and what type of possibilities there are. Then after the selection of the artists, we're gonna go into the prototype phase uh, where we're gonna have um, the artists joining the team and together we're gonna create a new plan, which we call the uh, innovation monitoring plan or indiv individual mentoring plan together with the artist. How will that eight month trajectory which is left after then look like? What will be tested? What kind of decisions we're making? What kind of collaboration possibilities? What are testing moments there are? Are we depending on harvest moments? Are the other dependencies to take into account? And there will be regular digital meetings to collaborate and other kind of meetings which are needed uh, for this project to develop. The artist will get the separate budget to develop their own prototype and they will also need to take into account traveling towards your SME uh, so you can accommodate them within your premises to have them actually understanding the testing ground and working with you. And then the last phase is actually demonstrating. There will be the first proof of concept and in this demonstrate phase, there will be time to iterate, to collaborate, to improve so that within our ambitions of bringing a prototype from TRL 4 to TRL 6, we can in the end also show how this is actually being tested within your site and evaluate the value, the proven possibilities of it and create the final video for that. So that is in a nutshell uh, how the program looks like with which different partners you will collaborate and how we will assist you throughout this 14 months program. Uh, then based on um, this, there are of course different uh, payment milestones. Anka, would you like to explain a bit more on this? Yes, sure. So as, uh, as uh, it has been said, you are starting the program beginning of September. For the first six months, we have the first stage where, uh, first of all, the lump sum that 
the grant that you are receiving up to 45,000 euro is a lump sum. And this means that you are not being paid against uh, invoices, salaries or anything, but against deliverables. We are going to establish these deliverables when we, uh, when you together with the Hungary Cities partners we are going to elaborate the individual mentoring plan. And there you'll see the milestones and the deliverables that you have to present. So for the first stage, for the first six months, you would be having uh, this uh, task to define the problem that you address in the application and to frame the solution together with the Hungry uh, Ecosystems partners. So when that um, is included in the individual, this task, this milestone will be included in the individual mentoring plan. And once we, we, the partners of the project, approve the individual mentoring plan, we are going to transfer 25% of the grant to your bank account. Okay, So the condition is for you to have the individual mentoring plan elaborated together with us, where you would define very clearly the problem and the solution. And uh, once we have that approved, we can do the transfer. The second stage will already start with onboarding the artist. Okay, so the second stage after the first after the first six months, so month seven, will be working with uh, jointly with the artist, and then it's when we are going to elaborate the Hungry Eco Cities team together with the with you and the artist elaborate a joint mentoring plan in uh, mentoring plan where. Um, the use case design will be elaborated. So here again, you'll find milestones and deliverables and uh, the information that uh, will help you organize and uh, plan all the work to, for the following uh, three months. And this is when we are going to pay another 50% of the grant to you and the other 50% for, from their own money to the artist, okay? This, uh, there is a mid stage as well in this uh, stage two, where we are working mainly with the artist for their digital prototype testing, and they are going to get a part of the money. So since your involvement in this mid stage will not be very consistent, <clears throat> sorry, you'll not have to present a deliverable, but collaborate with the artist very briefly for them to elaborate the digital prototyping. So the final stage will be to demonstrate, and this again involves both you and the artist for the experiment validation and you'll have a final deliverable to fill in with the support of the mentors from Hungry Eco Cities and when that uh, deliverable is approved you'll get the rest of the money the 25 percent in your accounts and that is the end of the project so it's very important for you to understand that you are going to receive money very very close to the starting date of the project and that uh, that tranche of money will help you sustain costs with your human resources, with your personnel, any travels and anything that uh, may, come, may come up in the first six months. After that, you'll be working with uh, the artist and get another 50% of the money to further explore the project execution with the artist. And at the end of the project, you'll get the rest of the 25%. Thank you, Anka. And with that, uh, we are ending the informative part of the webinar and we open the floor for questions. So please feel free to ask them in the chat or to uh, take the mic and ask them to us. We already have one request from um, Atanasia for a one-on-one. -on -one. So um, we will provide you to that room after the general Q&A. Are there any questions? Or is everything clear? As said, you can always ask the questions through uh, the help desk we have, or you can request a one on one. Uh, this webinar will be shared so you can re watch it, you can look at the different elements. Uh, we hope that we could uh, explain to you why this is an interesting opportunity. Uh, we're very much looking forward to work with you. Uh, we hope that we together we can work on this uh, new, more healthy, sustainable and responsible food system enabled by AI. And um, we will be staying here if a question pops up. 
please uh, make use of that. If not, then wishing you a pleasant day. We look forward to your applications. If you already subscribe to the application platform, you will also get notifications um, when the deadline is approaching. Um, I would like to thank my colleagues. And I have one question. Can you explain the role of the AI playbook? Are these the projects we will potentially contribute to? Thank you, Karen. So uh, the AI playbook is one of the components of the project. Uh, in first instance, you're going to create your own challenge based on uh, the company you're in and what you're seeing happening within the food system. And based on that set challenge, we're going to matchmake and find new projects with new artists. Then in parallel, you will be looking at the AI playbook and one or perhaps two of them will match with your company and you will look how that could be implemented and be of value of your company as well. So that's the second part, which is going to go uh, in parallel with what the new artists are going to do that are being linked to your project. Does that answer your question? You're welcome. So if you have a question, please stay free to stay here. If not, thank you for joining us. Wishing you a pleasant day. And then for, um, I would like to understand if test site is required for working with the artist like our office space, or is it the place to test prototypes? Then this could be also the field of a partner, correct? Rodolfo, could you take that question? Uh, <clears throat> yes, it could be the, the physical location of a partner in some scenarios, definitely. So if uh, if you propose a project idea, if you propose a, a challenge where there is already a partner involved and that partner has a test site where the demonstrator would happen, where the prototype would be tested, then that is possible. But it's best to reach out to us to see because in some situations it may not be eligible and in others it may so we should look at it on an individual basis the idea is that whatever we develop with you as an sme in this project we can demonstrate it's working before the end of the project in the real environment so the real environment is often a physical test site in some cases it can be a digital test site if you do not have a physical um, a process, but you have a digital process, that can also be eligible. Uh, but in any case, the idea is that we demonstrate it in the place where it's foreseen to be operating and that we know by the end of the project together whether this is something to stay, to continue working on or not. I hope that answers your question, Mustafa. Thanks. There is another question. What if I am the artist inventor that has a project and needs engineers companies that qualify as development partners? I would not necessarily need another artist. I would need scientists and engineers to develop the ID. Uh, in that case, we, we do have a second open call for artists. So that would mean that you should uh, yeah, return to this open call as of July 12th. Uh, that's when we're going to open the open call for artists where they can apply with uh, something they did previously uh, and based on that they're going to be matched with companies to see if they could test it in their environments but this first uh, part of the open call is specifically targeted at the end users at the SMEs to apply for the artist we will address in the second stage and that application will open after this one has closed you're welcome, Bart. Uh, you will receive uh, a link on the one-on-one -on -one meetings uh, where you can book them. Agnieszka, could you also add that to the chat, please? Um, or you could stay um, now, uh, and depending on what type of question you have, Anka could take it or Rodolfo or I could take it. And I think with that, we can finish the recordings. Uh, thank you all. We're going to open up uh, the one-on-one -on -one for Atanasia and Rodolfo. If there are other people wanting to ask something, Anka and I will stay here and we can take your questions as well. Thank you all.